crafty friends and welcome to today's video. In this video we are going to be looking at my top 10 ways of using clear embossing powder on cards. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how I go about embossing with clear embossing powder just so we don't have to go over the same technique loads and loads in this video. So I've placed a piece of smooth white cardstock in my stamp positioner. I've dusted it with corn flour and I've got a clean microfiber cloth that I'm going to clean the dust off with. And what this does is it stops embossing powder sticking where you don't want it. Embossing powder is very fine and any greasy fingerprints or static or moisture on your card will attract that powder and stick it where you don't want it. The ink pad I'm using today is this Versamark Watermark stamp pad. It's a clear sticky ink and it's worked on every type of stamp I've ever tried it on. So it's good for photopolymer, silicone, rubber, you name it. So I'm going to pick up my stamp with my stamp positioner door. You don't have to use a stamp positioner. You can use an acrylic block, but using a positioner just means that you can do multiple stamps and get your stamp image in exactly the right position. So I'll just ink this up. Flip that over and press it down and give it a second or two to transfer. As I say, you can stamp a second time, but most of the time I find the sticky embossing ink stamps first time. This is my clear embossing powder. I believe it is wow. I will double check and if it isn't, I'll stick a little note in. I buy it in big tubs from Amazon. I think it actually gets shipped from the US and it's a fine grain and it's really good for detail embossing as well as larger areas. And I keep it in this tub because it allows me to dip my inked card or whatever into the tub and get it coated without having to tip it out and make a mess of everything. I've got into the habit of always putting the lid back on and securing it on at least two sides in case I flail around and knock it off my desk. And when I hate my embossing, I usually do it in this non-stick baking tray. It's metal so it conducts the heat which means that your card gets heated from below as well as from above. And it does, I think, reduce the warping a little bit. And it also stops stray embossing powder blowing off around my craft room, not classroom. For my heat tool, I use this Dove Craft Essentials heat tool. I always use it on its hottest setting and I always let it heat up for a good 30 seconds to a minute before I start heating. That way you're sort of hitting the ground running and you're not heating your paper for as long. It's a good idea to keep it moving so you don't overheat any particular area because you can burn the paper if you do that. So what I'm gonna do now is just heat this. So you can tell when clear embossing powder has melted because it goes from dull to shiny and that has melted. A quick note on using embossing ink with clear embossing powder. Obviously anything that is underneath the powder will show through once it's melted. So if you use a dirty pad to ink up a stamp and then put clear embossing powder over it, when it's melted, you'll probably see mucky bits underneath it. So this is my oldest and muckiest Versamark ink pad. I use this if I'm going to use an opaque embossing powder, such as gold, because it doesn't matter what the sticky ink looks like, the gold is going to cover it up. This one's a bit newer, but it's got a few little marks on it that I don't know what that is, but it's there. And I keep this one, this is brand new, and I'm keeping this one as clean as I absolutely can so that I can use it for things like this. And another side note before we move on is that you don't just have to use stamps to apply embossing ink and embossing powder. You can use stencils as well. So I'm going to dust this with my anti-static powder sock that's full of corn flour also known as cornstarch and I've got this stencil I'll just pop that on there 
and this is a Versamark watermark ink refill but what I do with it is put a little bit on my mat take my dedicated Versamark sponge dauber pick it up and then daub it through the stencil you can gently swipe it or pounce it whichever works best for you or the particular stencil i'm not going to do the whole thing just this middle portion i think and then you can dip that in clear embossing powder or any embossing powder but we're talking about clear today and then you can heat that with your heat tool so i hope you can see that the clear embossing which was done using a stencil so let's look at my top 10 ways of using clear embossing powder on cards and the first way is to clear emboss over a stamped or stenciled image so i've got some one lipstick distress oxide here and i'm adding it to my stamp and some wild honey and i'm using finger daubers to blend those two colours together to give us a bit of an ombre look. And I have treated the paper with my anti-static tool. And I'm gonna add the colour again, do one more stamped impression just to make sure it's all nice and smooth. I'm gonna leave the paper where it is and I'm gonna clean this stamp without moving it as best I can get as much off as I can, give it a bit of a dry with my microfiber cloth and then I'm going to get my medium uh, clean embossing pad. I'm not using the clean clean one just in case there's still some ink on there. So everything should still be in the same spot so that embossing ink should be going over the coloured ink. With pigment inks and distress oxides, you can often omit the extra Versamark embossing ink step. Depends on your inks and your climate, really. If you live in a really hot climate, you might find your inks dry too quickly for the embossing powder to stick. In which case, just do it again with some sticky ink on top. So now that's ready to heat. And now that is melted and what it's done is it's made the coloured ink shiny slightly dimensional and it's deepened the colour a bit I think you can pop this back in your stamp positioner add another layer of embossing ink and heat emboss again with clear embossing powder if you want to make your clear embossing a bit more dimensional you can add more than one layer and here is a card I made using this exact technique all I did was cut a strip, stick it on a piece of pink paper, add it to my card and then add some Morning Dew Nouveau Drops which dry clear and there you have a clean and simple thank you card made using clear embossing powder. And the beauty of this technique is that you can match your embossing with the inks you've used on the rest of the project. And you don't have to have hundreds and hundreds of different colour embossing powders. You can have clear embossing powder and create coloured embossing using inks underneath it. So we're on to technique number two and that is emboss resist. So we use these that I made at the beginning of the video and I will add some warm lipstick. And some wild honey so we've put ink on top of clear embossing and you can see that the ink is not sticking to the clear embossing powder but the real magic happens when you buff over it with a clean paper towel or microfiber cloth this will buff the ink off of the embossed area cleaning it up and allowing the white or whatever colour is behind to show through. So here's a card I made using this technique, very similar to this. I heat embossed the word thanks in clear embossing powder and then went over it 
with inks. I also spattered on some water and picked them up with a paper towel and then mounted it on a white piece of card, popped it on the card and then added some clear morning dew nouveau drops too. So on to technique number three and that is known as a Joseph's coat. Instead of starting with a plain or white piece of paper I'm going to start with this multicoloured piece of paper and I'm going to use my ultra clean embossing ink pad. And now I'm going to pop that in my clear embossing powder. So that's all embossed and cooled now. What I'm going to do is take some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and go over this. And you can see what's happening. It's a type of emboss resist. I'm going to go over the embossing with a dry paper towel and that will buff the black off of the word but also carefully going to just wipe over this with a damp bit of paper towel and that will really lift the black off of the clear embossing. I like to use this ink for this technique because it's water-based which makes it really easy to clean up and wipe off of the letters. It's not permanent like say stays on so it won't stain the embossing but it's very black you can barely see through it but once it is nice and dry it's water resistant. This black splodge here and here is where I didn't get enough ink from the stamp onto the paper embossing ink and so you didn't get any clear embossing powder sticking to it. So here's a card I made with this technique. Instead of this warm colour background I used a bluey green smush background. Once it was all done I trimmed it out, mounted it on a thin strip of smooth white cardstock, popped it on the card and then added some copper Nouveau drops here and here and I'd probably do the same thing with this one I think. So now we are on to technique number four and that is tone on tone clear embossing. I'm going to use the super clean one for this again and again instead of white paper I have got a minty green pale teal type coloured paper. I'm going to stamp on that, dip it in my clear embossing powder and then heat it with my heat tool. And that's the result you get when you clear emboss on a coloured paper. You get a deepening of the colour. It looks a bit like a watermark. It's tone on tone, but you've got a bit of glass and you've got a bit of dimension. And here's a card I made with this technique. I used pink paper for this one instead of blue. And again, I cut it into a strip added it onto a strip of white, stuck it on my card and then added the Morning Dew Nouveau Drops again. So it's very clean, very simple, but quite impactful. I do like a monochrome card. Now I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've done the same thing. I've just simply heat embossed with clear embossing powder on vellum. So you can get that watermark look on vellum as well. On to technique number five now, and that is to use clear embossing powder to make your own coloured embossing powder. So what I've done here is I've put some clear embossing powder in the pot and I've also added some luscious pigment powder in crushed velvet. And now I can sprinkle that on my inked card, tap it off. And then heat this with my heat tool. So now what I can do with this is I can take a clean microfiber cloth, brush over it once this is cooled and set properly to remove any of the pigment. And now I have a violet, shiny, shimmery, embossed word that I made using pigment powder. Again, this is really useful for tying things in together. I can use this on my project in numerous ways 
and I can also heat emboss with it as well. I do have a whole series on pigment powders and I go into more detail about making your own DIY embossing powders in that. So do check that out under my playlist tab if you're interested in more detail. But here's another card I made. This one I use teal luscious powder. This mixed with clear embossing powder and sprinkled it on in exactly the same way and that's got a beautiful shimmer and shine. For technique number six, I've stamped my thanks in embossing ink and I've coated it in clear embossing powder. And I'm gonna use these luscious powders again. If you haven't got luscious powders, don't worry. Try it with whatever pigment powders you do have. And I'm going to sprinkle this over the word. Use a bit of copper and a bit of this warm wishes. I'm going to try and cover as much of the stamping as I can. I'm going to hold this up and I might just give it a sort of a, a little tap this way or that way. Just to sort of make sure everything's got a bit of powder on it. And to heat this, I'm not going to heat it from the top because all that powder will blow away if I do that. I'm going to heat it from below and hold it with a pair of tweezers so I don't heat my fingers. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see when the embossing powder beneath all that powder is melted, but if you've got any bits sticking out, you can kind of see them. So there I can see a shiny bit of clear embossing powder and there and there. So I'm thinking that's probably done what it needs to do. And what I'm going to do is tap that off and look at what I've got. And I might now just heat that again to make sure everything is melted and i'm not going to put this back in the luscious powder pots because it's a mixture of gold and copper but i will set it aside and use it later to do some smushing or something and now i can take a clean piece of microfiber cloth to dust off the bits that haven't stuck and i've got another shimmery shiny embossed image it's not quite the same as the other one. It's a bit more rough and ready, I think, this technique. There's patches where the embossing powder shows through, patches where the luscious powder is more dominant. It's a bit more of a grungy technique, I think. And here's another example card. I trimmed out my word, mounted it on a piece of card that I'd coloured using the pigment powders in paint form, popped it on my card front and then added some copper penny Nouveau drops here and here as well. So for technique number seven, we're going to prepare a stamped image for watercolouring using our clear embossing ink. So I've got here some mixed media paper because that's great for taking wet media. And I've got an outline flower stamp. I've prepped it with my corn flour. And I'm going to stamp my image in black. You can stamp your image in whatever colour you like. You could use embossing ink and emboss it with any opaque embossing powder you like, but I'm going to do it this way today. So there we have a nice crisp black outline image. I'm going to give my stamp a clean to get that black ink off and I can get away with using my mucky ink pad for this one because I'm stamping over black so I've kept the stamp where it was kept the paper where it was so my embossing ink should stick right over the black image and now I can dip that in my powder and heat emboss that so now that has got a slightly raised, glossy, waterproof layer on top of the black lines, but not anywhere else. This is a great alternative to using black embossing powder. I've never had much luck with black embossing powder. It's never quite fine enough and it just seems to get everywhere. And now that's cooled and set, I can watercolour my image. So I'm just using Distress Oxide because that's what I have to hand. I've smushed a bit on my mat, added some water, picked it up with a paintbrush, and now I can paint over it. The black line is now waterproof and will not shift, but it also creates a tiny
tiny little physical barrier and makes it ever so slightly more easy or ever so slightly easier to watercolour. It stops the water going where you don't want it or the paint going where you don't want it. Can add a little bit of orange to that as well. So I could let that air dry now or I could heat it with a heat tool or a hair dryer but on a low setting not getting it too hot because you don't want to risk melting the embossing powder. And here's a card I did this technique with. Stamped in black, clear embossed, watercoloured, spattered, added a sentiment. Right on to technique number eight and that is to make enamel or enamel look shapes and tiles. So I've cut two squares out of some patterned paper here. It's the paper or one of the papers I'm using in my six by six paper pad series. And I'm going to press it down onto my super clean ink pad. You could use a doorbell to add your ink. Obviously, if you're aiming to cover the entire piece with ink and powder, you don't need to use an anti-static powder tool. But what I'm going to do is just dip my squares into the clear embossing powder. I'm going to heat these with my heat tool and then while they're still warm, I'm going to dip them back in here again and then heat them with my heat tool. If you do it while they're still warm and the powder is still melted, then it will pick up more powder. If it goes cold, just ink it up again with the ink pad and then dip it in. I'm going to do that two or three times. So that's the results. You get a glazed tile like look. You could create quite a fun pattern by tiling those together and obviously you can do any shape you like. For these two cards I die cut some hearts out of a background that I'd created and then heat embossed them with clear I think three maybe four times and stuck them on the front of these cards with some sentiments and nouveau drops and a bit of textured um, embossing or scoring in the background. Right, on to technique number nine. And that is to use clear embossing powder to make a stained glass window. I'm going to show you a really basic version and then I'll show you something a little bit more complicated, although it really isn't. So I've stamped an image just as an example on this bluey minty paper and I've got three square frames here identical and I'm going to pop the first one on there like that I'm just using high tack PVA glue and layering them to create a small well and I'm going to trim that out, although not completely, because I want to have something to hold on to. I will trim this off later, but as I say, I want to hold on to something and not bear my fingers. So I'm going to leave that to one side. I'm going to take my clear embossing powder and fill up the well that I've created with my two frames and just gently scrape that across the top, kind of level it off. It doesn't have to be perfectly level. When it melts, it will level itself because it will be a liquid. I just want plenty in there, that'll do. It doesn't matter if it goes on the frame because I'll be putting my other frame on top afterwards. Again, I'm gonna hold it with my tweezers and I'm gonna heat it from underneath. So as you can see, the embossing powder has melted. So that's cooled now. I can take my nice and neat fresh frame, add some glue to the back. 
and then layer it on top and that will hide any mess from the heat embossing and I'll trim this bit off now I no longer need it so what we've got here is a very 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 simple stained glass window you've got the glass here looking through to an image behind and a frame around the outside this one looks a bit more complicated but it's exactly the same process i cut out three smooth white cardstock die cuts using this heart die i stuck two down onto a piece of pink cardstock filled up the wells with clear embossing powder heated them from underneath and when it was cool and set i added the neat and tidy die cut on top and a heartfelt sentiment. I didn't do any stamping in the background because I felt there was enough detail with the intricacy of the die cut. Right, on to technique number 10. I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock that I'm treating with an anti-static powder sock. I have got an embossing folder here which I am treating with anti-static powder. I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and get as much of that powder off and I've got a brayer here which I'm going to ink up with my Versamark reinker. Just put a little bit all the way around and then I'm going to roll it to coat it on my glass mat. There's a hair there, don't want that really. And now I'm going to roll it over the background side of my embossing folder to coat the bits in between the stars. So I've put my card on here, cornflower dusted side up, and I'm gonna close my embossing folder, keep it still and run it through my cuttle book. So now I'll carefully open that, and the embossing ink should have transferred onto the background between the stars. So all that clear embossing powder has melted and you can see hopefully that the background behind the stars is now glossy. The stars themselves are not. Once that has cooled, you can do emboss resist with it if you want. You don't have to, but you can. And then you can get a clean cloth and just buff off the excess ink. If you dampen your cloth ever so slightly, the ink comes off a bit easier. But there you have embossed resist using clear embossing powder and you've also got physical dimension from the embossing folder. So here's a card that I made with this technique. This is a bit that I haven't coloured and I quite like it the way it is. So I might use that on a maybe white on white card. This one I use Broken China to colour the stars. I mounted it on a piece of cardstock that I coloured with more by Broken China. And then I added a gold glitter star and a You're the Best sentiment. So I've got a little bonus technique for you. I've dusted my piece of card with corn flour and taped this stencil down and just going to add some colour through the stencil. And now I'm going to use some reinker ink and my sponge dauber to daub on some embossing ink through the stencil. I'm pressing down quite firmly because I want to get into all the detail parts and I'll carefully take the stencil off and the tape and dip this into my clear embossing powder. But before I heat it, I'm just going to sprinkle over some glitter. I've got some large chunky glitter here and some iridescent glitter. And I'm going to heat that and from the underside again, like we did with the luscious powders 
and the stained glass window. And now I can go over this with a clean microfiber cloth again. And this should remove any unstuck glitter. The glitter should really only stick where the clear embossing powder was. So now I've got a shiny, dimensional, colourful, glittery pattern made with clear embossing powder. Right, that is 10 ways to use clear embossing powder on your cards, plus a bonus way with the glitter. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things that you can do with clear embossing powder and the stamps and stencils and other bits and bobs in your stash. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments and I will see you back here very soon for my next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.